scientists are people, they have in common the curiosity for trying to find out how things work. Other people in the world share that curiosity. The difference with scientists is they apply a method to it that's called the scientific method. But there are many different personalities. There are very outspoken people. There are the so-called nerds. There are people that like to be in the lab all the time. There are people that like to travel to be inspired. Uh, and so the diversity in people as scientists is the same of diversity in people in the general population with this particular commonality of being driven by curiosity of wanting to find out how things work and having a method and counter verification for it. How is it that we do all these actions in the world? So how is it that we learn to do new things? How do we use the information we have to choose to do A and not B? When do these actions that we do become habitual and when do we lose control, like for example in obsessive compulsive disorders or addictions? When do we lose the ability to perform actions, like in disorders like Huntington's or Parkinson's? So we have a few experiments that have to deal with the human brain, but many of the things we do, we use other species, like for example, little mice that can have something equivalent to the problem in humans, but where we can map very well, for example, the anatomical neuronal circuit that's involved in a process, we can manipulate that circuit, we can shut it down temporarily and see if it's involved in a process, then we shouldn't be able to do the process we can enhance it and elicit the process, right? And all of a sudden you have me moving my hand and I don't even know how. So we use these methods, you know, new methods of very fine mapping of the brain, very fine recording of the functions of certain neurons in the brain and manipulations of the brain and the study of behavior, of the decision, of the action itself to come up with a holistic picture of how the brain works. So a good scientist needs to be curious and passionate uh, about what they do, but needs to be honest. The other is persistence. The everyday life of a scientist is not very glamorous. There are a few moments in which we discover amazing things. The rest of the moments were cleaning up things, were uh, facing experiments that didn't work, were working very hard to come up with new hypotheses. And finally, I think there needs to be some creativity. I mean, there are two or three general principles. One is, of course, honesty. So you cannot commit fraud in science. And second, you have to be a nice fellow to the other scientists. Apart from that, what I think is important is um, we're still talking about people. Scientists are people, so everyone has different motivations. So you have to know what their motivations are to try to maximize them. Some people work very well with positive reinforcement and hand guiding. Some other people prefer you know, to be left alone. Some other people prefer deadlines and pressure. People need to feel inspired and have a common goal and believe that what they are doing has an impact.